So what, one thing that really weighed on me was becoming a dad for the first time. And, and I suddenly, well, I got a lot of anxiety about uh, like passing on the faith. Like, how in the world am I going to do this? Like, to try to get into their hearts and heads this thing mm -hmm. that has meant so much to me that I, like, think is the most important thing in my life. How do I do this to them, for them? You know, I can't compel them, but what are the most auspicious circumstances possible, you know? Uh, and I got really nervous about that. And I thought, it just seems way more likely that if we stay in this Anglican community that we had been in involved with for so long, with like-minded families, with kids who were the, our kids' friends, much more likely that our kids would come out being Christians mm -hmm. than if we just, you know, heard a bunch of of either banal or heretical sermons. I remember one sermon just outright denying uh, the reality of hell. You know, it's like, don't worry, guys. You know, this is not. And then what do you have to worry about? You know? Anyway, so so I think in some ways I still sort of believe that a really good Anglican community and a really bad Catholic one, uh, if what you want at the end of a, of a child's upbringing is like a firm commitment to Jesus. It's like maybe, maybe you, the better bet is to raise them Anglican and then hope they find their way afterward or something like, because at least they have a foundation. Yeah. And that might sound, that might sound too Protestant or too subjective because, uh, you know, the sacramental efficacy and, I mean, and all it, of that. But You're right, and yet we all get it. Like, it, it does, right? Like, my defenses go up as you say that, mm -hmm. but I also agree with you. Like, mm -hmm. I, and I don't know how not to. Like, yeah. if I find myself in a town and I've got two options, I've got a Jesuit church that's hanging BLM and pride flags, we're thinking of the worst possible. Yes. <laughs> and then I've got some, like, Antiochian church or uh, Serbian Orthodox church just teaching the apostolic faith. And those are my options. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that technically I have to, and maybe that is the answer. You have mm -hmm. to. I don't know what I'd do. I, I wouldn't go there. Yeah. I'd probably go there. These are weird things to have to wrestle with, aren't they? Because Aquinas hard. in the 13th century is dealing with Islam, Catholicism, and maybe atheism. Yeah, <laughs> That's an easy choice for him and for Catholics right. in the day when you're raised in a culture, which we're not. Like We don't yes. have a culture. We, we were don't. just given... MTV and the Super Bowl once a year and something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. This is hard. This is the wreckage of Western civilization that we're making our way through. Yes. I was just in Ukraine. I said it the other day, so forgive me for those who are hearing it again. But, you know, in Ukraine, I used to think it was just like this thing that Eastern Catholics, I'm a Ukrainian Catholic. So it's when people would say like, glory to Jesus Christ, glory forever. You know, it's like there's this little thing that we... We kind of force our poor Western brothers to endure. No, it's indeed he is risen. You know? <laughs> and I just thought it was this religious thing. I go to Ukraine, every single human being says that mm. on the street, at the mm. pub, at the coffee shop. They all say, glory to Jesus Christ, glory forever. But now it's he is uh. risen, indeed he is risen, all in Ukrainian. There is this, it's almost like the liturgy, it elevates culture. And maybe, I don't know what it does, but... All I know is I live in a day and age where I don't feel like we have a culture and it's an awkward thing to, an, to adopt one in a religious manner. Yeah. Like I want a culture because I feel like an orphan. Yes. So, you know, and then you, and then you kind of fetishize this culture that wasn't yours, was never given to you, like yes. I've done. Yes. And like we all kind of... You shouldn't have to choose your culture. You shouldn't have to choose your faith in one sense. It should have been but bestowed upon us. Yes. Yeah. But now we're in this very awkward situation trying to find family traditions, but we don't have a family. There's isn't, a, isn't that it? There's a word for this in Welsh. What and I it? love It's my favorite word because my yeah. last name is Welsh. It's hiraeth, H-I-R-A-E-T-H. And it means to have a deep longing and miss something you have never known. Okay. Hmm. And I think that's what you're kind of yeah. driving. It's I'm like Welsh too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Up, up top. <laughs> um Am I right? I feel like I'm saying something true. I think you are. I haven't got any definition of what I'm saying yet. But yeah. We're all just awkward. It's awkward as hell. Yes. Like we, we're just looking for right answers and right devotions and right books. And, and then we're latching on to people who can lead us through this forest of blah because we feel like the Pope can't or our bishop can't. And so we come up with these internet personalities to lead us through the wilderness. And, and then if we get disillusioned with them, we, we try to find someone else or we just rot 
hell, it's a hard time. Yeah, it is. But you know, the, that experience in 2018 of realizing that, uh, you know, my, my rebellion or my, my anger at the church, not being as good as I had hoped it would be that all of that meant that I was just being a bad Catholic. It, it didn't, it didn't just wash away whatever valid criticisms I may have had here and there, but it did, it did put this onus on me to, to do my part. And that was really liberating. It was really energizing. For you my weren't tempted to life. say, all right, I just made a mistake with that Catholic thing. It's a mistake. I don't, they don't have to be my people. Yeah. There wasn't a temptation to do that. <laughs> no, because you know, it was because I, I, I live so much in my head. So there's always the intellectual side of things. And so if, if it were merely experiential, if it were merely a community thing, um, I'd be, I'd be a really happy Anglican and I know exactly what church I'd go to in Waco. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go to Christ church, Waco. I think it's great. Um, but I, I am convinced yeah. of the truths of the Catholic faith. And so I, 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 I would never be at peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an ordinary in Waco? There's not, but we have friends in Houston and every now and then we go to our lady of Walsingham. I have go been visit there the several friends. times. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's my home. But again, it's, yeah, this is strange. Like I had a friend who now attends a Ruthenian Byzantine church. And he said to me, he wonders if the Reformation had never have happened if our version of Catholicism would look a lot more Anglican today. Mm. Like the fact that there was that severing, we are the beneficiaries and recipients of French, Italian, Polish, yes. German yes. Catholicism, whereas the English stuff was kind of relegated to the Anglicans. Yes. But yeah, that's if a good anything's point. our kind of that. inheritance, if we're from those islands, like that would be it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I love the ordinary. It's beautiful. yeah, yeah. And Cranmer's prayer book language. I mean, it's just uh, it just feels the best way to pray <laughs> in like sort of prayer book English for me. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor: leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.